Okay, guys, uh, Ryan Hartman here with Inside Real Estate, and we have our guest, Brett Furman here. Hey, Brett, how you doing? Good, wonderful. Other than the cold weather, doing great. Yep, yep. Uh, so the topic today was something like uh, how Brett's mixing old and new strategies to sell more listings. We'll just start there and jump right in. You just want to let everybody know a little bit about you, where your brokerage is at, how you, got, you know, whatever you want to say, and a okay. little introduction, yeah. So I'm an old timer. Um, I've been doing this for 30, I'm up 37 years as uh, in real estate. Um, own a real estate brokerage in suburban Philadelphia. So we're along the main line just outside of uh, Philadelphia. And I got in this by um, being offered um, a cell phone. You know, 37 years ago, cell phones were like $1,200. I had a brother and he, he was in a real estate office and said, I need help. And he like dangled a $1,200 cell phone when telephone calls were like $2 on this. And I said, okay, when can I start? And I never looked back and been doing it ever since. Yeah. So would you say a lot of your business now does come from the fact that you've been in the business a while and uh, you know, you just sit around and people call you for no reason. Is it like that? Um, a good bit of it, but um, I still do a lot of new generation business because I'm yeah. always, I do a ton of marketing. So I do generate some new and mainly some of my home sellers are new, but um, a lot of referral business and repeat. Yeah, that was a little bit of a loaded question because a lot of what you do, uh, we're going to get into it, uh, has to do with how you stay in touch with the people you've worked with. And it, it, it kind of falls under the category of staying in touch, referral generation, but also is a lot of the same activities that you would take to generate fresh leads, right? Yeah. And I found too, Ryan, that it used to be when I started, like, you know, you could do like one touch point, right? People would, you know, you could send one thing out and they would remember you. Now, like people are so bombarded with stuff that it just requires a lot more touch points to stay in contact with people than anything that I used to do when I got started. Yep. Yep. So let's get in uh, to some specifics. I will stop here. I kind of went a little out of order for everybody watching. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to chat them in. Brett and I will do our best to kind of answer as you see some of the things Brett's doing. I'm sure some uh, thoughts or ideas will come to mind. And then at the end, if we don't get to your question, we'll make sure we we get to everybody uh, there. Um, so how I kind of just asked this, but right now in 2024, you've done something like I, I might have the number wrong. Was it like 27 transactions, 28? Yeah, the listing transactions, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're, to, 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 so everybody knows, Brett has his brokerage, you have a, a number of agents there, and you kind of operate a team separate from that and do your own production with a small team, right? Correct. Yeah. Plus so, a whole bunch of other stuff besides real estate. <laughs> That's <yeah>. another topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the part two. Yeah. Um, the But the, uh, the team itself, you with a couple of assistants, uh, you're, and you might have one buyer's agent, I think. Yeah. Right. Um, you've done uh, 27 or so deals and you, I'm totally forgetting the number, but somewhere in the neighborhood of six or 700,000 GCI. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and how did, where did most of that come from? If not referrals? Um, so my business primarily Ryan is a listing business. So I'm very focused and heavy in home sellers so we do all kinds of marketing to drive that. Um, some of the things are home seller workshops just for right. people that are thinking about selling. So that's one of our, our engines, if you will. Um, we do another one for seniors. Like I'm very niche focused. So I'm not only dealing with home sellers, but I'm 50 to 55 plus home sellers. So I've targeted that market very, very heavily and I continue to try to grow that market. So we have the home seller workshop, which talks about a book I wrote, which by the way, I just finished book number two, um, which should be out hopefully in another week. It's in the edit or the, it took literally a year to create this book. Um, so it's just an update on my first book and that book gets distributed to my home seller workshops and we use it in all kinds of different marketing programs. I didn't have the book on uh, the list here. How did how do you get a book done? Do you pay a third party uh, to ghostwrite it for you, or <laughs> do you do you just write the darn thing and and get it published? What's that? What's I, that look like? 
I did it the wrong way. I wrote it and that's why it took so long. Um, and basically, um, it, it goes over everything to do. Really, the book is really, honestly, it's, it's a book, but inside of it is a listing presentation. So it pretty much talks about the benefits of utilization of me for selling your home, the different strategies we use. It talks about all the marketing, the direct marketing. It talks about everything. Same with the home seller workshop. If you really like narrow down the home seller workshop, it's really a listing presentation designed to have a lot of people attend at one time, right? You can make a listing presentation for one person or why don't you do the same thing and have 20 or 30 or 50 people come to your workshop? It's a lot easier. And, um, you know, as I look at my success, it's trying to, you know, time value, trying to work the most efficient way I can, which is get my message out to a lot of people, you know, one time and try to replicate it easier. Yeah. So you have your book, The Home Seller Workshops. Let's share with everybody because I find this uh, fascinating. I, I don't know if you mind sharing this technique no, and you tell me if I'm, I'm asking you to reveal too much, but no. how, your your technique back in the day for getting people butts in the seats at these workshops, the, the dinner. Yeah, we started with a dinner. So that's, um, and it's funny, it's going to circle all the way around because I'm actually going back to that. Um, yeah. So the initial concept and the way I've done it for many, many years, I probably a good eight or 10 years doing this at homes, you know, the, it's the steak dinner. It's the, if you look at like the financial service industry as to what they've been doing to generate clients, it's basically the same program. It's a wedding style invitation that comes to your house to a targeted list of people. And basically they get to come for a free dinner. It's a steak dinner and it's an hour presentation and it and it would generate every single time i did it i had 50 people in the at the restaurant and i'd fill 50 seats but remember the 50 seats you've got a significant other you know so you got to look at your you know it, it's an expensive you know outing they're five thousand dollar a night events you know each you know to have it at a, a, a really well-known steak dinner the invitation the follow-up yeah. it's not cheap but if your if your average transaction side is high enough, and you know that you'll probably get yeah. one right away, and maybe one yeah. or two that dribble in, yeah, then it starts to make sense. Not to mention just how how you're staying in touch with everybody. You're probably inviting your whole sphere to this thing, right? It's inviting. It goes out to social media. It goes out on direct marketing. It goes out every way we can promote this. So it's built a really good following of people, and we get people to come multiple times. My best example is I just completed a, I represented a home seller that came to the workshop like four years ago. So it has, you know, for those listening on the call, it's not something you can turn the switch today and expect to get the return tomorrow. It doesn't work like that. It's, it's a percolation process. You have to continually stay in focus and contact with these people um, because they're always not ready to transact when they come to a workshop. Some are, I've had some where, the guy said, I've been on a waiting list at a retirement community. And I just got called yesterday and I'm here at your workshop. I'm like, and then he calls me. He's like, can you come list my house? I'm like, yeah, I think I can do that. So sometimes that happens. Not all the time though. Yeah. So, so but it all falls under the category of staying in touch with people. Um, you use, I know you're really heavy power user of your CRM. Now you have access to Bold Trail, but you're not quite totally into it yet. A yeah. lot of the agents at your office are, but yeah. you're, you're a follow-up boss user and a, a power, I would consider you a power user. You do a ton using your CRM. And for everybody watching, I, I think Brett and I would both agree. It really doesn't matter what you use. We like when you use Bold Trail or one of our products, but the CRM is probably one of the most powerful uh, things you are leveraging, right, Brett? I yeah. And what I tell people about CRMs is because I've been a student of CRMs. I've studied them. I've analyzed them. I've been through six different migrations uh, in my history. So um, what I tell people is the best CRM is the one you use, right? Because if you don't use it, it's worth nothing. If you use it and figure out how it can benefit your life, I run multiple businesses, my life, my world, all in a CRM. And without that, I, I wouldn't even know where to go tomorrow. I just would have no idea what to do. So, so it's very important. So what are, I know you send like a weekly newsletter, right? I yeah. see you send it because I get it. Yeah. Um, weekly newsletter. Uh, you seem to be really diligent. You have your assistant 
uh, you're diligent about record keeping, right? You add notes yeah. about every interaction in your CRM, yeah. right? Yeah, we keep track when we're negotiating contracts, when we know birth dates, we have anniversary dates, we know the relationship of our various clients. You know, we're now in generation three, so we have clients that are referring, you know, their kids and their grandkids to us. So we have that all cross-connected. We also operate um, a concierge system for our clients. It's it's a free service we offer. So we have probably a little over a thousand vendors in our CRM and we keep tracks, diligent track on them to know, are they performing? Do we need to remove them? Did they show up late? Are the people happy with their pricing? We wanna know because we don't wanna refer people if they're not worthy of the referral. Yeah. And you have that on your website, the uh, referral yeah. business. I knew as soon as I started talking to you, there's there's <laughs> more things on my yeah. doc than are right. But if that's your home concierge service. Yeah. Yeah. So just to share with everybody, Brett has this, uh, it's essentially like get in touch with me and I'll, I'll let you know who I trust. Right? Yeah. It's like Angie's, the old Angie's list on steroids, because they're people that I've used personally. My clients have used them and we do remove people. We add and remove. So if somebody is doesn't show up or they're late or they're they're not neat and my and my client tells me because if I make a referral I follow up with every person ask them how is how is the service did you like the person they do a good job because that always turns into you know my cousin's thinking of selling or my my aunt needs her deck redone or whatever and it just keeps magnifying yeah and I one thing I like about this too is that as you interact with these service providers you're kind of gaining top of mind status with them because you're referring people to them. So I'm sure you're getting some transaction flow yeah. back from these, from these partners. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then on the notes front, uh, so you're using follow-up boss to keep track of everybody. Uh, you're sending newsletters. Do you do anything like manually just take time every week to call people? Like what, yeah. how do you, how do you stay? Yeah. I call on an average day. Um, my goal is to get through 15 outbound calls a day. Um, touch in a lot of times it's leaving messages and everything. We have an anniversary program. So that that's, that's another program built into the CRM where they get um, a card on their anniversary and a call. It's always a call on a card. Um, so those calls are occurred plus people that need, I need to reach out to um, they're on continuing calling programs. We keep track of our hot sellers, um, our hot buyers, um, our vendors, anything we need to, you know, keep track of. Yeah. I don't mean to distract you with what I'm doing. Yeah. On the screen, but I will plug in bold trail, right? You probably don't even notice, but we do have a pretty cool birthday and anniversary automation stuff. Uh, if you ever want to take a look at that, but everybody watching, you know, you can automatically send a, a, an email, automatically send a text. And if you want to get direct mail going, there's ways to integrate, you know, with third party solutions for that to um, trigger that at bold trail. But yeah, that makes total sense at least once a year to just say happy anniversary of your home sale and happy birthday. Uh, most, I'd say nine out of 10 agents aren't doing that at all. And and you're just, probably higher than that. It's probably, probably. It's probably like, like le probably 1% call. Them. I don't know. It's, it's, it's disheartening, but very low. Yeah. And it's the because best you're probably business. You're your agents to do this kind of stuff and you yeah. know, it's, it's tough to get them to do it. It's the best business because, you know, when you call someone for, you know, I can't tell you how many people that you've been calling, calling. And by the way, we're now we've been calling orphan buyers so that if we have a listing and an orphan is someone just for those on the call that don't know is somebody who we did not represent in the transaction because the probability is that other agent that brought the buyer to our listing will never call that client ever again. So yeah. we get a lot. I just had one. I just settled it actually for we listed it for nine hundred thousand. We sold it for a million and it's an orphan buyer. And not only that, she called me after the transaction. She needed all kinds of concierge help because she was moving from the South. I think um, uh, Kentucky, I think she came from. And then she lived here for like five years. I sent her painters, plumbers, all kinds of things in the interim. And then she said, I'm heading back South. And I listed her house. It was a great transaction. Yeah. And it, yeah, it, was, it wasn't your client, but you were the one, it, yeah. she essentially was, because you're the one who stayed in touch. You, you yeah. had the top of mind status. Um, how do you time block these 15 outbound calls? Is like, do you come into the office and do them right away? Or do you like... Uh... It's all scheduled on the CRM. Everything is scheduled. So I put a time in, 
and I just go through the calls. I click, I check them off when I'm done. I add the notes and then I do follow up ac actions, whatever I need to do to follow up with them again. But it's like on autopilot, like, and if I don't sometimes make the calls, I'll just push them to the next day. Yeah. And just kind of keep pushing them forward till I get it done. Yeah. And then you're probably using your team, your assistants to help with that follow-up stuff, I assume, like the, hey, so-and-so needs this or that. Yeah. It, it, yeah. We yeah, tag them in the system and have them do, could you send out the listing package? Could you send them a handwritten note? Could you send them, you know, there's all kinds of gifts. We have a gifting program. We have a whole series of things that happen as well. Yeah. And I know you do a lot of connecting of people too. I imagine you're introducing, you talk to somebody who needs the, a vendor or like, Hey, you should, you should meet this person. That, that's what those conversations turn into. Right? My so. best ones, Ryan, as of late are um, employment um, connections. I'll connect an average year, probably three or four clients with jobs like major jobs. Um, <laughs> it's crazy how it happens, but it's been, it's been really good for the clients. They love that. Yeah, I mean, I, there's your top of mind right away there. What better can you do for somebody to help them get a job? Um, yeah, that's really interesting. Um, the Just the fact that you're probably going into these outbound calls, um, not really to sell them a house right away. You don't have that mm -hmm. attitude. It's not, no, like, it's no. it's not prospecting. It's literally just networking and staying in touch and, and having a I'm very low key on the selling part of it. Um, yeah, it's yeah. really just trying to help them add value. And I believe it'll come back to you tenfold. Yeah, it seems like it's worked. I mean, you've built it up over 30 years. But yeah. It, I mean, it doesn't need to take 30 years for anybody watching, no. right? If you, if you start doing this stuff tomorrow and you're, you're, you even call one or two people a day, um, you, your production's going to jump, right? Yeah, I mean, I started with a CRM that had like, you know, all it was was a Rolodex, basically. It didn't have any, you know, communication abilities it had nothing right so like if i only had the tools today i'd be yeah. so much in a different place but that's just the way it is just curious you doing any video email yet um it's funny you say that i just started a program and i've been testing it and it's something i am very very interested in doing yeah yeah bull trail has uh we have an integration uh, with bomb bomb uh, I bomb bomb it, yeah yeah we're calling it something video you can just Within your campaigns, when you get a new lead, you can automatically send a video out um, or you can blast email. And I think, boy, I can't even remember. I think you can send 10 of these free to try it out. So if I'm in a contact, I just go in and uh, click. Give me a contact. Somebody just imported a bunch of leads here. So it's messing it up on me. Here we go. The real, the way I wanted to use that, Ryan, is for example, we're doing um, Pi Day for Thanksgiving. That's one of our promotional events. Yeah, and we want to use the um, the video email, right? It's you know, just making sure you got the invite, letting you know the pickups November twenty sixth from twelve to two. Please call the office. The choices this year: are apple or pumpkin. You know that type of thing. And it's just yep. another touch point, basically, besides the voicemail, the direct mail the calls, the social, all the other stuff. I, I almost forgot about Pi Day. So let's transition. Oh, so up till now, okay. we've sort of talked about some of the old school, uh, you might call it belly to belly, the phone calls, the happy anniversary, just using your CRM in a very basic way to add notes and stay in touch. Um, you and I probably for the last six months or so have been interacting around some, we've been trying a bunch of stuff together because we're having yes. fun. <laughs> And let's be honest, not all this stuff works right away. Agreed. <laughs> but it's it's kind of fun to play with it. And then you, you get some home runs. So one of them was your Pi Day. Uh, I'm going to go into uh, your Pi Day campaign here. Yeah, please. I almost completely forgot about it, honestly. Yeah. Um, and where did I put it? I'm just going to go into your main upper right. Page. It's right there. Stay. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to look for the actual post uh, you sent out. There it is. So you got 33 QR scan RSVPs on this one send. Let's just look at it. There it is. So so what, I'll let you explain. What, what's Pi Day? So um, Pi Day is basically an opportunity for us to invite our clients, uh, customers, um, some of our neighborhood people, and they get an opportunity to come to the office. We're outside and there's a two hour window and we have probably 150 pies. And 
everyone gets to leave with a pie and we get to say hello. I'm handing the pie. We have a photographer taking pictures. There's a whole so social campaign that goes with that as well. Um, it's a great event. I've got people now calling some people calling saying like, I didn't get a, I didn't get a pot inv invite this year. <laughs> like, or, you know, um, I'm changing from apple to pumpkin or, you know, you've been doing this. It's got it. It's the best thing. And by the way, I want to tell you, like my aunt's going to be selling the house and I'm going to have her come. Is that okay? I'm like, Oh yeah, absolutely. Come, you know, bring your aunt with, I'll get, what kind of pie would she like? So it's a great, it's, and it's fun. It really is. We really enjoy this event. And then we give, sometimes we'll have no shows, which is very typical for people, right? They'll RSVP. And then we have numbers on how many come and how many don't come. We keep track of everything. So we do different things when it's, when pie day's over. Sometimes I go to first responders, which is great. And we bring our photographer and we were like, I think it was last year, we were in the fire station with, you know, in front of all the fire engines and stuff. It was awesome. We gave them, I don't know, like 20 pies for the whole, you know, fire department. We go to the police station, we go to senior homes, you know, we'll go to different places because I want, I don't want the pies to go to waste. Yeah. I'm going to, I think my wife and kids are going to be out of town that day. I'm going to come to pie day. I want to yeah. see this. I want to see this. It's fun. You're about an hour and a half from me. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> It's, it's, it's an off, it's really fun. And it, it backs up. Like we do it at our office. We've talked about moving it, but it, you'll see the road sometimes get mighty crowded. It's, it's, in, you know, there's a line coming in. We have a whole process. I bought cones. So like now we have, you know, cones, we have a heater. Actually I have two heaters, propane heaters for being at for, for our staff. So we don't freeze in case it's cold, you know, it, so 150 pies. Yeah. Um, I know you've sent a bunch of postcards to invite people. So there's some expense there. Yeah. Um, the pies, uh, you know, your staff for the day. So you're a couple yeah. thousand dollars. A couple in thousand. Yeah. yeah. But that's 150 people. Who, in addition to the people you invited who didn't RSVP. Yeah. Because there's a lot of those people. You've got to get a listing. And the timing of the, the timing of this is like right before selling season comes, right? Yes. Right before people yeah. list. Okay. And the best example I can give Ryan was uh, it was last year. I was working on this listing in Havertown and I sent this, it's a community, maybe about 20 minutes from where our office is. So um, the homeowner got the, um, you know, the pie day and I said, Hey, I'm going to come. As a matter of fact, would it be okay if I sign the listing contract when I come pick up my pie? I'm like, absolutely. Yeah, no problem. So like, <laughs> that's a one-to-one -one <laughs> correlation right so it does Did you work. have it under the pie so they had to eat the pie first to get to the listing contract yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't give them the pie till i said you have to sign first before you get to get to get the pie <laughs> yeah that's awesome so um okay so pie day everybody there's probably time if anybody wants to try this you could probably get this done still um for this year around thanksgiving um let me pause for a minute then uh we had a few questions that i was missing just two quick questions and then we'll continue on um, do you get a referral fee from the concierge vendors? I, assume I no. get zero from the concierge. I, I've done marketing for them. I do not charge them a dime for anything. I've never have. And I know that that's contrary to how a lot of agents work, but I'm very careful about, you know, RESPA stuff and all yeah. that. It's just not worth it. There's RESPA concerns. You're also the broker owner, right? Yeah. So you're, you've got, you've got that layer of of stuff going on too um, now the one thing i will say with that the benefit i derive from it is that like my i have a couple handymen that are like gold to me because you know i have home sellers and i offer all kinds of programs for them that will help them fix up their house and renovate and do stuff and i can call these people and like like i i literally just put a house on the market um it's 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 going to be live on on thursday and then saturday's the open house um, but the person moved to Ohio and the house I went in to see that needed to be painted. The appliances didn't work. A floor was missing. The front door was shot. And I, I, I was at the listing literally there. I called the handyman and literally he's like, I can come tomorrow. And I was like smiling, you know, cause I'm signing the listing and literally he came tomorrow and did it like started that week. So huge benefit. Huge yeah, benefit. you're. That is a really big benefit, especially when you have deals that are getting tested. Yeah. Last minute, they're always going to pick up the phone for you. Oh. 
And then uh, are your cards handwritten or do you send through a company? Um, what was the question? Uh, are your cards handwritten? You mentioned sending oh, handwritten cards. Um, yeah, so that goes into like the whole direct mail program. So we, yeah. I don't know if you want to, Jump yeah, we'll, we'll talk there, but you use, I know you, you guys sometimes do, right? I saw at your office, Brett, just to answer that question, I'll answer for Brett. He's got a hand, this guy's nuts. <laughs> he's I am he's nuts. got a handwriting machine yes. in his office with like yes. the pen. Um, he's, he's also been working with me a lot. I'm a co-founder of Banks.io as well, uh, alongside my role here at Inside Real Estate. So Brett and I know each other from there as well. So that that's another vendor. Um, so the handwriting thing basically means that you can, I can dictate a letter to somebody and then they'll put it into this very expensive machine and it basically replicates my handwriting to the T like you would swear it's me. Like it does envelopes, letters, everything. We try to run that sometimes all day long. Um, if you, could you, uh, Sam right there, can you get a picture of that sent to me real quick? I'd love to show people. Um, Sam's actually sick. I'll all right, text don't worry Michelle. about it. We'll, we'll yeah. follow up, guys. I'll, I'll do like an email yeah. or something this week and show you Brett's uh, hand with the replay of this video. Yeah. So. My hand, like I, my handwriting is just not good anymore. And I crank a lot of handwritten notes out. So they all go out through the, um, if it's a handwritten, it goes through in the office through a machine with a stamp and an envelope and all. If it's, you know, heavy duty distribution, um, it's going out through Thanks IO. Yeah, cool. All right, so let's show some of the stuff we've been just playing with together uh, lately. I just have these in no specific order, but I was just going to show everybody a little bit about your Facebook retargeting. Oh, yeah. Um, that we've recently, you you weren't doing too much of this, right? No, um, very little. In fact, what, almost, I was doing no retargeting, which is, I don't even know what I was thinking, but that's a whole nother topic. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially somebody like you who's got a big database, you've been in your area for a long time, so people do kind of know who you are. Um, retargeting for anybody who doesn't know is basically where you start showing Facebook digital ads. It can also be physical direct mail. Uh, and you're just following up with people after they interact with you. Um, the technical side of this, uh, that I helped Brett with a little bit is just getting your current sphere of influence, your list uploaded to Facebook as audiences, and then starting to show people, um, ads related to what you're up to. And um, you can see some of the numbers on the screen, this column right here where it says cost per result. I, I realize it might be small for some of you guys, but for uh, $1.59 a click up to six fifty four dollars on this one right here, Brett's getting people to come back to his website. Um, and he's also getting these impression counts right here. So 2,300 times, uh, this ad has been seen 2,300 times for $66, Brett, this particular ad. And I would I like to it. think of those, and it, that's from 491 people. So each person saw that about five times, right? So these are tiny little micro touches. They're seeing an ad on Facebook with Brett's uh, face. Uh, in this case, it's your Ready, Set, Sell program, which I might kind of show everybody yeah. here. They're, they're seeing Love a full-on video of you for 60-something dollars. So I, did I say it was 400 people? watch Brett talk to them about his home selling program for $66. So, and by the way, Ryan, that particular program, the ready, set, sell is not really about listing, but it's, if you do list with me, you get um, all kinds of equipment machinery that's available at no cost. Like, you know, you have water in your basement, you need dehumidification, you need an air mover, you have odors cooking. I have all that equipment to do handle all that stuff. Yeah, I don't know if people would be able to hear the video, but Brett's basically right. standing in his garage here. You're a nut, yeah. man. It's me. <laughs> standing in his garage, holding up all the different uh, uh, tool power tools that he'll, he'll yeah. lend you if you list your house. Um, but and again, by the way, like Ryan, that program, like I've used it for, like a guy came to my home seller workshop and he had water in his basement. And he was like, he had no clue what to do. The handyman guy came to fix it and redirected gutter. Then I put the air mover in his, you know, crawl space, solve this guy's problem. Like literally like the next day where that isn't in the real world, that wouldn't happen that way. Yeah. Yeah. And now, now you're his guy and yeah. anybody who he knows who's going to buy or sell real estate, you're probably getting a call. And he gave a video testimonial. So, at, you know, it, it goes much deeper, Ryan. So like, you know, you, you exceed expectations and it comes back to you. And the way this one came back was he was in the office one day and we're like, Hey, would you do a video? And he's like, yeah, no problem. 
So now we have a video of it, which is cool. Yeah, which I don't, it's not this fellow that we ran a retargeting ad off of, is it? Yeah, that's him. Okay, yep. cool. So to, to tie that in, we actually took that particular video uh, and ran that for a little while as a retargeting ad, which is basically a testimonial video Yeah. that's showing to everybody uh, who hits your website, everybody who lands in your follow-up boss. Um, we're also piping in anybody who scans any of your postcards uh, ends up here. Um, so, so yeah. So retargeting, uh, one thing I'll mention about retargeting, you'll notice some of these ads are live, some are turned off. Uh, currently, Brett's got his ready, set, sell running, and then he's got his October market update. Uh, you've recently started doing videos just talking about where the market's at in your area. And we're running those as retargeting for a month or so. I guess you're due to do another one for the end of the year. Yeah, I just gave Samantha one. Um, by the way, we, we I don't know if you want me to say what I'm using, but I'm using a, a product called Veed. Mm -hmm. And um, it's an awesome program. It has the teleprompter. I mean, it doesn't get any easier. I mean, it, yeah. it's a great program for for making some videos. Yeah. So you're just doing, you're letting people know like what the average prices are, where inter interest rates are at. It's, it's a simple five minute video, right? I think. Yeah. yeah. Like we just did one on our, um, we have an historic home division. So I have a historic home writer. And we made a video to try to grow her business, right? Because I wanted to add value back to her because she helps me and my clients writing these stories about their historic homes. And um, that went real well. So we pushed that out. And now, it, and, and I think you retargeted that and all as well, or if you haven't, it will be. Yeah, there was a separate ad running for that. Um, yeah. uh, we we got to show people your most interesting ad, uh, man no. <laughs> ad, before we get on to some other stuff. Sure. <laughs> So you paid uh, this okay, guy. So yeah. to, uh, I don't know if, can you hear this, Brett? Uh, always sell my home in Pennsylvania. Yeah. When I do, it's uh, of course only with Brett Fur. So that's the Dos Equis guy for anybody yeah. who doesn't recognize okay, it's him. Not my habit. Or if you don't drink enough, that's the guy. <laughs> yeah. So how'd you get that? You want to let everybody know where you got the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, my team did it. I honestly, I know they went you know, online and it's a company you basically pay them and they make. Um, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's cameo.com unless there's another one. Uh, yeah, it doesn't ring a bell, but it could be. It wouldn't yeah, surprise some, me. Some cameo is one of them where you can go and pay like a celebrity to. Yeah. To do a it's not that much. I mean, it's a great mm -hmm. thing. Um, I really like, I mean, I'm, I, I need to do some more of those. Yeah. They're fun. And now in this retargeting ad, I don't want to spend too much time on the retargeting. Um, one key thing about these is it is good to mix it up because you don't want to keep showing the same ad over and over again to your people. Uh, what's happening here is they're getting little uh, glimpses at Brett in all these different ways, the, some fun ways, some testimonials, his ready, set, sell, uh, data driven, like the October market update. And you just kind of mix them in. And I think you're going to have a really good spring as yeah. these, you know, four or five, 600 people who are seeing your ads every day yes. start to think about selling their houses. You're, you're yes. going to have a good spring. Um, okay, so that's Facebook retargeting. Uh, Google ads, you don't even, I'm, you kind of just gave me access to your account. I was like, can I, you mind if I, I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm just spending your money, Brett. I, I said it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, well, it's not that much. But uh, one, two, two examples your ready, set, go video, the one where you're standing in the garage. Yeah. Um, that's running to everybody in your town in Radnor. Um, so that's gotten 15 clicks back to your website for 350 a piece. Just well, so you know. Okay. And it's um it's been seen 3000 engagements. Uh it's getting a lot of interaction. So it's run on YouTube. Let me take this back a step. It's run on YouTube 4800 times and then it's costing you 2.7 cents to get a view, which basically means they watch it for 15 seconds. I believe is a view. It might be 25 seconds. Um, so the reason I bring this up is if you're creating content like Brett is every day, you definitely want to make sure you leverage it. He's got it in his retargeting ads and now he's just running it cold on YouTube through the Google ads platform. Um, and this is stuff I saw as we talked, I was like, are you doing this? You might as well. You spent the time to make the video, just spend a few extra bucks and get more distribution. Right? Yeah. The one thing I'd say, Ryan, with all these programs is it all does tie back to the website. And I think yeah. a lot of agents... Uh, don't put a lot of focus and attention on our on websites, but this website is a custom 
creation that I've been working on for years. I mean, we work on it multiple times a month with changes and enhancements and things. So it's, it's, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty intense. The website, it does a lot of stuff, but it drives everyone back to it and it works, you know? Yeah. Uh, Brett for anybody who wants to check it out. And then, yeah, as you're saying, if you look at the navigation, I really like the way you do this. It's kind of like whenever you come up with a new marketing idea, it gets added as a page. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Um, and, you know, when we talk about the retargeting, uh, you know, people are coming here from all these different sources, but then they're getting pixeled and then they're starting, you're starting to follow them around everywhere. But the website is the home base of that retargeting. And the way, the reason, Ryan, I know the website works is because when I go on listing presentations, I found that the home seller <clears throat> typically knows a ton of information about me if it's someone I've never worked with or I haven't worked with the family so that they're going into the website to read all the different parts and pieces about me. Yep. And yeah, it, it not only makes you look more legit, it's saving you time because they're, yeah. they're, they're pre-sold on you. And I think the key point here is I see a lot of websites here at, at Inside Real Estate and, and uh, Bold Trail. Um, most people don't ever add content. Let's be, let's be honest. Yep. I agree. <laughs> like, but mostly your site, it has a nice design, nice, clean, everything. And most agents will focus on the design and what it looks like. And I want this to, to be here, but you've designed your site with content. It's content rich. Cause my consumer, the consumer I'm dealing with is typically heavily educated. They're in the medical space, financial services, CEO level. So that website has to have that look and feel and it's designed to, to answer a lot of the questions. And then you see Ryan showing some of the senior stuff. So because I'm very, I'm a niche home seller in the senior world, it's heavy duty in the senior world. And we have a webinar for seniors. That's a whole nother topic, but I don't know if yeah. we can do that. Yeah. 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 So, um, Okay, so the anonymous attendee comment, this all costs a lot of money, paying other people to do all this for Brett. Uh, what are some of the things we could do ourselves that don't cost money? I'll just, real quick, Brett, I think Brett does a lot of this himself. Over, yeah. himself. over the years, you've built a very small team. Yes. Um, but, you know, and he's not, you're not, the, maybe the retargeting, I kind of just did that to show you could be done, but your team could easily, or you could easily do that. Um, all right, but I want to answer the question. What are some of the things we can do ourselves that don't cost money? Um, well, taking videos of listings the, the way Brett is, uh, sending a handwritten card, doing the phone calls every day to your sphere. Um, you know, a lot of these things don't need to cost money. Uh, the video, video creation of, you know, what the market update, any of your programs you're working on, you know, you know, I do videos of my book. I do them all myself. You know, basically it's sitting on a ring camera. The computer goes in, I turn it on, the teleprompter comes up and I'm good to go. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And I'll give like a quick answer to this just so you get bang for your buck. I would take some of the content ideas that Brett's doing, you know, the market update, um, anything you want to do for value. If you come up with the concierge program, Try to do at least once a week, if you could do it every day, come up with some piece of unique content and just email it to everybody in your CRM. That, that's a simple starting point, right? Just, just to stay in touch. Um, so, okay, let, let's keep going through. Uh, we're getting pretty far into the hour, but we've got more time. Um, so Google ads, Facebook retargeting, um, just listed, just sold cards. I'm gonna transition a bit into the direct mail. Oh, my favorite topic. Yeah, I know. It's yeah. my favorite. <laughs> so I'm just going to show a few things you're doing on the direct mail front. Um, I realize uh, to answer that last question, some of these these things cost money. But if you do have a listing, probably sending a just listed, just sold is, I mean, it's, how much business have you got? It's pennies, a ton. And it's so inexpensive, Ryan, that those just listed, just sold cards, the response rates are off the charts, first of all. And you're talking about a minimal amount of money and that's pretty much done yourself or, you know, it, it doesn't take that much effort to do it. Yeah. So, you know, if you've got a listing at 500 K and your, your side is, I don't want to talk numbers because I'm not supposed to, but okay. you know, whatever, you're going to have a five figure commission somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, it always, it surprised me how many agents don't go ahead and just spend a hundred bucks on some just list of just sold cards. It's such a small piece of the um, puzzle. And one of the you're, you've got to promote the listing to the neighbors, but 
the leads that just listed just sold cards generates it, it's kind of crazy like the roi there right it's way off the charts i mean i've been doing direct mail since i started and they wrote stories and i've been interviewed because i used to drop like 10,000 cards at a shot and you know huge numbers and you know we're getting back then maybe a half or one percent and we were happy right you know that was good now i'm seeing with the new program i'm using there's thanks io i'm i'm anywhere from three percent i'm disappointed and i've seen it up to 50 percent. it's it's great the numbers are crazy yeah so here's an example card um it's a simple just your neighbor's house at this address just sold it's got that picture of the house that sold um, the QR code is dynamic. So when people scan, you're notified, the leads go into follow-up boss, um, into your CRM. Um, and, you know, you've got the second call to action. That's basically, uh, scan the QR code to get four instant opinions of your value right now. You use another tool, yeah, home valuation tool for that. Um, so you can do just list that just sold. The reason I want to show everybody this, but then have this call to action down at the bottom to get their home value. Um, and generate some pretty good activity. I think this one got five scans off of 50 cents. Um, so yeah, 50 out of 50 cents. So a 10% scan rate, somebody interacting with you to check their home value um, right there. So just this is just sold. Um, this is one I saw you do where you had 12 scans on 71, and it's a very similar design, but you offered your book. I don't even know if you saw this. I think somebody on your team put this yeah. together, but I never um, saw it, but whatever. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, you know, automated, it basically says automated tools can be wonky. Uh, feel free to call me anytime for your home value. Um, and then the QR scan is to get your book. This particular card was a re was actually a follow-up to somebody who had scanned in the past. That that's, that's what that is. So this is an example of direct mail retargeting. Uh, I'm running a little quickly here. Uh, and then the next thing I wanted to show was that follow-up campaign you have, Brett, for anybody who does scan on your Just List of Just Solds. Uh, just to show that you have a day one, a day 30, a day 90, a day 120, and a day 150 right now with different touches going out to anybody who initially interacts with some mail that you've sent. Um, so... Just, just showing this, I had it on the screen. Uh, somebody's asking Ursula, is Brett using Bold Trail to send his direct mailings at that cost? Uh, Brett, uh, thanks.io is in, is in the uh, Bold Trail marketplace yeah. as a third party vendor that Brett's been using. That's how Brett yes. and I met. Um, but yeah, uh, we haven't gotten around to this yet, Brett, but you could easily be triggering these cards off of, out of the Bold Trail system using automation if you wanted to. Okay. Sorry to rush that part, Brett. Is there anything else you wanted to say about direct mail? A lot. Um, so when Ryan was talking about like how many things are going out, now that's just the direct mail portion. Remember, intertwined in that, they're getting calls, they're getting newsletters, they're getting invitations to Pi Day. We have Valentine's Day, Flower Day giveaway. We do, you know, other. Uh, there's a party. There's a whole bunch of other things happening, but it's about touch points, right? It's a lot of touch points. And, and uh, so I, I like that word touch points and then it's multi-channel. Okay. Yeah. Right. That, that's like, you're doing, you're, you're doing a very sophisticated uh, multi-channel marketing. You're not thinking about it like that. You, you're just a, you're just, you're a guerrilla marketer through and through and you wake up every day figuring out what to do today. Right. Yes. But, you, but what you end up doing is getting a, a fair amount of success from the fact that you're everywhere people go. Yes. Here's Brett showing up. Um, so do you have a wrap on the back of your car yet or a tattoo on the back of your neck with a... No, I haven't done that. I'm kind of low key on stuff like that, but I thought about it, but I haven't done it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, and then maybe we'll show one last example. I don't know how this did, Brett. Uh, we did get a see a few scans come out of this, um, but it's oh, just- Oh, the bowling, okay. Yeah, it's just an example of, you know, going old school into the physical world. You own a bowling alley down the street from your office, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, for a little while we had a text code live. I don't know. Is this ad still showing? Uh, you know, I honestly don't know, but I think we need to increase the, um, the benefit that consumer gets for, um, you know, we were offering free bowling games, I think too. I think we should up that to try to see if we can get our response higher. Yeah. So you, I saw maybe three to five yeah. dribble in and yeah, got some. 
Yeah. So this was showing on the screens, guys, that at Brett's bowling alley, you know, the the scoreboards. So if somebody, if a lane wasn't occupied, this is when it shows, right? Yeah. Um, and then if people scanned, they got two free games of bowling that day. I have the number blocked out in red because we don't want you guys scanning and messing up the the uh, response rates. But this is a text code that's built in Bold Trail. And then if somebody texts the house value to that number, there's like an auto response that says, yeah, what's your address, basically. Um, so just, just an exa example, you know, you've got old school bowling in person yeah. stuff going on, and then you're transitioning that person into an online sort of uh, SMS funnel. Okay. That was a fire hose. And you didn't even share like half the stuff. <laughs> no, <laughs> you left all the good stuff out. <laughs> yeah. Well, what, what did I leave out? Do you have one more? Um, oh, geez. Um, Trying to think. Um, well, I'll let you talk, but we didn't even get into the stuff you do once you get the list. We, you know, we now we're using, um, we now have a VA who's, you know, inviting people to our open house. Like we're making a thousand calls for our home sellers. Our goal is to get as many people in the open house as possible. So people trip over themselves because obviously if they see other people, they think, and they're interested it does kind of motivate them to help them think about pricing, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. So calling to invite people to open houses. Yeah. Okay. I think we've, uh, <laughs> we've, like I said, fire hosed everybody with ideas here. Um, does anybody have any other questions? You can use the chat or the Q and a, uh, if you have any other questions or comments, um, we realized this, that this was intentionally all over the place. Uh, but I think the biggest takeaway, Brett, is that you've got to kind of consistently uh, stay focused on market marketing and try new things, right? Consistency and touch points. That's the key. You got to hit people with just a lot of different different ways. The old way of one call or one letter, it's not enough. Yeah. And what if you stop doing all this for, for six months or a year? Um what do you think I, would happen? I think you would see the business fall off significantly. I, yeah. I really, at, at um, top of mind would go away, um, would absolutely go away. There's so much interference in marketing that, that it's like, you just have to be top of mind. Yeah, maybe back in, you know, when you were starting or when I started in yeah, the you know, 90s, early 2000s, you might get away with not doing this because your competitors weren't doing all this stuff. So maybe you were in somebody's Rolodex as their realtor and you haven't talked to them for four years and they give you a call. Um, that stuff's probably not happening too much anymore. I would just, nah. be, yeah, because everybody's got these tools and is doing these kind of things. Um, so do you ever sleep, Brett? Um, yeah, actually I sleep really well, but when I go to, when I put my <laughs> head down on the pillow, I'm out within about two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I sleep really well. Yeah. So guys, I, you know, I, I don't think you have to be um, as all over the place as this. Brett, you clearly enjoy marketing and a lot of this is just I fun. I love it. Yeah, you love <laughs> it. Um, but if you just take a few of these ideas and implement, I would probably start with getting your CRM in order, you know, making sure you have the database in place and you've got everybody you know in there and, and maybe get that time blocked out to do the phone calls or the touches. And CRM, the important part, Ryan, would be categorization of the people, right? So you know who you have, right? Are they a seller? Are they a plumber? Have they transacted business? Are they another agent? Are they a financial person, a lender? Who are they? So you can know who these people are, what their role is, and what's your communication plan with them. Yep. Yep. So you've got, here's a contact record in Bold Trail. You talk to somebody. Um, and then, you yeah, you go and you add a note. You know, you make sure you're always doing this kind of thing. And all CRMs could do this. Um, Brett, I don't know if I ever, I don't know if a lot of people know this. I love the pin note to top. Mm. So if you have like, uh, you know, uh, Charlie, you know, has, has three kids, you know, Charlie, 12 years old, you know, as you're talking to them and then you have like their bio note up at the top, that's always sitting there front and center when you talk to somebody. Uh, it's pretty cool. That's a cool feature actually. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you everybody for hanging out here with us. Um, we have a poll that probably popped up. Um, if you could fill that out, um, you know, if you're not already using bold trail, 
uh, or have access to it and you'd like to learn more, you have the option to do that right there. Um, uh, if you want kind of done for you ways to generate some listing activity and leads within the inside real estate ecosystem, uh, you can check it off there or just you know check out our marketplace anytime. Some of these uh, versions of what Brett and I talked about can be implemented through our marketplace. Uh, that's that. Brett can be reached at, you mind if people reach out to you? Yeah, sure. Uh, BrettFerman.com. You can only reach out if you have a, a uh, referral in suburban Philadelphia. That's what Brett said. Yeah. Wow. Just, kidding. Just kidding. But, you know, I'm sure you'll take a referral or two if anybody does happen to have anybody out there in the yeah. Philly area. Um, and yeah, anything else from you, Brett? Any other advice for everybody watching? Um, get the CRM, use it. Like, I, I honestly, in this world today, I don't know how you can function without one. Um, use it. You, it's it's there to and it really magnifies your you know your your business significantly it's probably the best thing that's out there that's probably the most underutilized tool for agents right now yeah i think it's always surprised me how many people are just using their phone <laughs> your phone your phone can be a crm but it's not a, it's not ideal right so, yeah the tech is here Okay, Brett, thank you uh, for doing this with us today. And My pleasure. It's a lot yeah, of fun. For sharing. And uh, everybody, uh, stay tuned. I'm sure um, you'll receive an invite next month. We do these spotlight series, I think, once a month or so. And then, of course, we have our YouTube channel. If you just look up insiderealestate.com slash YouTube, we have our Facebook uh, groups that you can plug into. And uh, if you have any general questions at all about anything, it's always support at insiderealestate.com. Thanks again, Brett. Yeah, my pleasure. Have a great day, everyone.